Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Walter, I appreciate you stopping by. Please like, subscribe, follow, give me a thumbs up, or comment below. Anything to help the channel out. I would appreciate it. Today's review is Thor Love and Thunder. Or as I described it in the title card, Thor Love and Blunder. There's going to be a lot of people talking about Thor. There's going to be a lot of reviews. There's going to be a lot of back and forth. I could just say this. The analogy I want to make, just bear with me. Did you ever have a, a puppy dog when you were a kid who was so cute and wagged his tail and licked your hand and was just a little fur ball running around and having a good time. And he'd pee on the floor and you'd say, okay, I'll clean it up. He'll get better. And then he'd lick your hand and run around and wag his tail and you'd be happy. And then he'd chew on the sofa and tear up the sofa and he'd still wag his tail and look at you and lick your hand and you'd just be caught up in the oh he's so cute in essence that's what thor love and thunder is it's not offensive in any way everybody's likable but the story is non-existent it appears to be made out of a bunch of what people producer writer thought would be funny and because of that it's to say disjointed would be an insult to disjointed it's a bunch of uh throw togethers amazing transitions amazing in the the bizarre sense that they are so wacky and it really is a movie that has a tone or should I say multiple tones? I asked the usual question, who is this movie designed for? Fans of Thor, I guess. Six-year-olds, maybe. Hardcore Marvel movies, action hero fans, hard to see them enjoying this. Satire and comedy, it's some of it's funny and some of it's just over the top. It's a hard movie to describe, but that's what happens when you have a mess. So Taika Watiti's back with the story credit, and, uh, you know, he directed Ragnarok, as most of you know, and Ragnarok I liked. I thought it had the right mix of humor, and it had the right mix of a superhero action in it and it wasn't over the top in this movie the same elements that he had in that got totally put out of balance it's become satire almost it's become parody almost and the transitions from the serious plot of the god killer and the buffoonery of Thor and Korg and Zeus and King Valkyrie. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? It's a, it's a mess. It's a fun mess, but it's a mess. I look at these reviews and I wonder what movie they're watching that I'm not seeing. I mean, I'm a Marvel fan. I liked Thor Ragnarok, but this is a mess. I mean, you, I'm not going to recant the plot such as it is except here's the story jane foster sick grabs thor's hammer to feel better and stronger becomes a semi superhero the god killer wants to extinguish his all gods he crosses paths with them and mayhem ensues but not real mayhem more like comedy mayhem You've got uh, Russell Crowe not just chewing hamburgers, 
but chewing the scenery as Zeus in an over-the-top parody performance. You've got uh, Natalie Portman back as Jane Foster. For a woman with terminal stage 4 cancer, she's very uh, f flip about it and very chipper. And we have cameos from Cat Demings, Matt Damon, etc., etc., etc. The best thing about the movie is the soundtrack, and that's saying a lot, or a little, depending on how you look at it. I won't break down every action sequence or every comedic sequence. I will mention the Guardians of the Galaxy are in this movie for about four minutes. No, maybe three minutes. Just strictly in it for, I guess, billing purposes because there's nothing that came of them and it was just like a checklist item. Everybody in this movie seems to be there with no apparent reason or goal. Thor kind of alternates. Hemworth's portrayal alternates between love-struck schoolboy, pouty teenager, and over-the-top superhero. Take your pick. All of them were pretty mediocre. Uh, Tessa Thompson's wasted. She doesn't have much to do except act drunk and throw one-liners. Uh, everything else, <clears throat> scenery, in terms of visuals, pretty good. Better than some of the last few Marvel movies. Uh, pacing of the movie, got to have a plot to have pace. So it's knee-jerky and it's up and back, it's up and back. Um... I would su simply say that if you take your kids to see it, they'll laugh and ask you a lot of questions about what the hell's going on. If you take your parents to see it, they're going to laugh and ask you what the hell's going on. And if you're going to see it yourself, you're going to say, what the hell's going on? And you'll probably stop laughing after the first 45 minutes. All in all, it's a real uh, cornucopia of weirdness. It's almost like uh, David Lynch on acid in some respects. Now that's a pretty vague reference, but it fits the mood for me. Anyway, on the scale of one to four kabongs, four being best, Thor Love and Thunder gets a... Holy! Pick him up, stage coach. Come on! One kabong, and I'm giving it one kabong because the soundtrack is great. Any movie that's got ABBA and Guns N' Roses in it has something going for it in that sense. Anyway, I know I'm in the minority on this, and I tried to like it, but I just can't figure out the best it is. Take care, everybody. Thanks.